Welcome back to the Mavcast podcast, radio show, whatever you want to call it, new media. My name is Charlie Maverick, as you know, and I'm back with another episode of the cast that is called the Mavcast. Thank you for uh, tuning in, especially after uh, a couple of episodes of Ratchet and talking about Ratchet. Thank you for joining me again for another week. So I just want to talk about, real quick, the weather. Wasn't going to say expletive before I really get into this, but it's cold as shit outside. Cold as shit. So there's a Arctic Matrix blast that's going through the northeast and is dipping down to the south. So show is live in Atlanta, first of all. Now... Here's the weird part about the weather. You got this Arctic blast that is going on in the northeast, coming down south. Woke up this morning. Wind chill factor was two degrees with the sun out. Pissed off because I got to, like, layer. I don't like the layer because, you know, as soon as you layer and you get into your car, and, of course, you're going to turn the heat on, what happens is you get hot. So halfway down the road, what happens is you want to unbutton your jacket and get comfortable because if you want to drive and be comfortable and listen to the radio and not be irritated in traffic you you just you don't want to be hot in traffic and and all that happening at once right so what you want to do is the heat start going you want to unbutton your jacket now you did all this to layer bundle up in the wind and the cold get in the car and you're freaking hot some of you got uh, seat warmers, and you're cold as hell. With before you get in the car, you turn the heat on, got it going, got your jacket on, all bundled up, layered, and the heat start blasting, and 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 the seat warmers start going, and your butt starts sweating, and you got all dressed up, and now your dress pants is like sweaty. It's, it's all wet at the bottom. Now what are you gonna do? And uh, and he start going, and then you start sweating, and you're like, man, it's like two degree wind chill factor, and I'm sweating. Now you got to go to work. Now your fo- your forehead is all glossy. If you put on makeup, you- your makeup's probably like all messed up. Got to reapply, right? Now you got on dress pants. Hopefully you got on dress pants that are dark enough to not show the wet spot on your butt that was provided by y- your seat warmers. And um, you're all uncomfortable. You're all uncomfortable. And I said all this to say the cold sucks. The cold sucks because you have to layer it. And then as soon as you get in the car, you have to unlayer it just to layer back again when you get out the car. Yeah, great. So it's cold on the East Coast. But in Denver, the Mile High City in Colorado, it is in the 60s. What type of shit is that? I don't understand that. I don't. I don't understand why it is like that. It's supposed to be colder in Denver than it is right here, right here, right here. So screw the cold. I never thought I'd say screw the cold. Bring on the heat, but don't bring on like 90 degree weather. Bring on like 65 degree weather, and I'm good. But you know, I am. Uh, I am never satisfied, and that's how it is. Anyway, today. Today, I want to talk about social networks. How social networks have screwed our culture up. The advancements in social networks. The things that we take for granted with social networks and the things that we have left behind as a people because of our reliance to social networks. Let's talk about how social networks really came to be. Now... There are no facts to back up anything that I'm going to say, so if you take me 100% seriously without researching, it is your fault for quoting me to the general public. Just want to say that, because if you call me out, I can't show proof. Just want to say. Now, here's my take on where social networks came from, and you might go to Wikipedia. Screw Wikipedia because that's crowdsourcing. It could be just as wrong as I am if I am, in fact, wrong. Thank you. And that is a part of social media and social networks that we're going to talk about. So, back in the day, 
back in their parents' days, and, and even back if you're an 80s baby, back in the 80s, early 90s, how did we get in touch with each other? We had the telephone, and we had the mailing system. You either sent a letter or you call someone on the phone. Now, I don't know how you grew up, but the way the phone system worked is AT&T owned everything, but it was screwed up how they, the FCC separated them into um, different companies. So you had Bell South and you had this other thing, but AT&T owned the lines. So literally right down the street, your cousin could be right down the street, and they could be in another county. And because they're in another county, you have to pay long distance fees. So you didn't call your cousin. You, you waited until you saw your cousin either at school or church. So, hey, let, let's even go back to slave days. Slaves used to congregate in the church on Sundays. That's the only time you really got together to talk. Now we had telephones and then mail and then all that. So you, you talked to people on the phone for hours, 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 as long as it wasn't long distance. Or you mail them and you wait. You at the mercy of the the post office, and hopefully they check their mail and they read their mail. After the fact, you know they probably read it, and then it doesn't mean anything. It's irrelevant at that point. So whatever you had to say, uh, it doesn't matter anymore. But we we got used to that. It was something we got used to, right? So things came along, technology advanced. And then they broke down those barriers for, like, let's say, the telephone calls uh, with the uh, uh, with the counties. And now you had this tri-county thing, or you had um, free local long-distance calls, right? So you call people more, call people more, and then you still you still were subjected not to see them, uh, and and uh, you basically had to wait. You had to wait to, for them to pick up the phone. If someone called you, you didn't know who was calling you because there was no call ID back then. So technology advanced and advanced, and then of course we end up having mobile phones and uh, you know to the general public in the 80s and 90s, and uh, we can call people on the go. That's all well and good. And then technology advanced a little bit more. And then eventually we have pagers. Here's the dumb thing about pagers, and this is this is not going to tie in so well to no social network, but just the advancing technology. See where I'm getting at. See where I'm getting at. Pagers were so stupid. You had this little beeper pager, wherever you call it, from wherever you're from. You had the pager beeper on your hip, which required a number. Someone had to call a number. When they called the number. They didn't get an answering machine. They didn't get somewhere where they can leave a message vocally. What they did is they basically paged you. Yeah, paged. So they call the number and it beeps. Now the first pages didn't have what we call uh, numerical displays. So the first thing you had was beep, beep, beep. Somebody call you beep, beep, beep. Yep. Then what happens is it got, it got a little bit more advanced because the dumb thing about it, and it really had to fix it real quick, was terrible technology at first. No numerical displays. How do you know who's calling? Great. So they had to fix that real quick. So the, the next iteration came out, and then it had numerical displays. Now here's the thing. You saw who's calling. You had to find a phone to call them back. So if you weren't one of those... Uh, wealthy people or drug dealers, you didn't have a phone to call them back, so you had to find a pay phone. So you're paying twice. You're paying for the peop the the person to call you, to pay you. Then you had to pay a uh, a pay phone, whatever it cost, to call them back. That's stupid. Anyway, so moving on, uh, and that's a whole nother show about the pagers being stupid. But the advancement of technology moved on, and we had more access to get in touch with people. Then we had email that emerged with the internet. And now you can email someone, you can write a letter to someone as quickly as you can type and send it off to their email address and they not have to wait for the post office. Yes. So you are not subjected to the mailman losing your mail or getting this return to sender. In fact, the only way that they would not 
get your email to them is one if they did not check or if you typed in the email address wrong and you got the return email because you can't spell like me you refuse to copy and paste but that's the thing so email allowed us to get in touch with people quicker without voice without um, mail hard hard copy mail yeah so next the advancement in mobile phones allowed us to text T9 text now T9 text was the most inefficient way to communicate with people whatsoever it was kinda of like Morse code you had to get used to typing on that numerical keypad but we got quick with it very swiftly and it became uh, uh, it, it changed culture our, 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 the way that we interacted with people just like the telephone changed culture just like email changed culture, text messaging changed culture as we know it. Now, it wasn't as bad as it is now, but we still used to call people. So text messages used to cost a lot. I think it was 10 cents per text message. So what you had to do is you had to ration out who and why you were text messaging. So you would still call people. And, of course, cell phone minutes were kind of expensive also, especially if you were on a company that was owned by Verizon. And um, you called only when you had to until you got home, and then you talked all night on the phone because you had that free local long distance, which was not actually free. You paid a flat rate of $50 plus dollars a month to AT&T or Bell South, which was owned by AT&T anyway. And um, and that's how you communicated. So uh, things advanced again, advanced again. Yes. And in the late '90s, we have what we know today on the internet as social networks. Now let's go. Let me let me go to the history of social networks because I've been on social networks since I think it has been established. Now. If you guys remember back in the day, if you used the computer back in the day, you had CompuServe, you had uh, ICQ or IQC, uh, which was more of a known today as a corporate communication um, instant messenger. But a lot of us know AOL, America Online, and their messenger. And we got really frequent with two instant messaging services back in the day Yahoo instant messenger and AIM AOL instant messenger when those came out those changed society again now you didn't have to use your minutes now you didn't have to use your text allotment now you didn't have to wait till you get home to uh, to call someone you can do this from the library at school. You can do this from the comfort of your bedroom. You can do this without even talking, uh, waiting for the person to have a full-on conversation. Now, what you do is you get on the computer while you're doing other stuff, and you chat with them. This is the inception of chat. So, chat came on, very popular. They had chat rooms. You remember when chat rooms were popular? Yeah, the the, the Yahoo chat rooms. And they had 50 million Yahoo chat rooms, and it got to the point where they they eventually cut it out because it was it was too um, it was too uh, abusive to to everyone that was in there. Uh, you go in chat rooms and and they were cursing each other out for no reason. And you see this type of behavior go on in forums now that we know now. You comment forums on YouTube and and tech sites and whatnot or newspaper sites. Very amusing. And, and very depressing at the same time of how people act. But you saw the, the beginning of something that was um, either going to be great or going to change us for the, the bad. So what happened with the Yahoo Messengers and the AOL Instant Messengers is it advanced into what people uh, see now as the web-based uh, social networking, not the not just the instant messenger, but something to where you can create a mass profile or bio 
You can connect with friends, have a friend list. You can search for people that you don't know, kind of like just just like you did with the the instant messenger with uh with Yahoo, but it wasn't an application. No, you didn't rely on a computer application. You just go on the internet and utilize that internet straight up out of that web page. Now, you had things back in the day like um, College Club. Old heads remember the College Club. Of course, you probably had to be in college at that time to remember College Club, but College Club was, was one of the first um, social networks out. And of course, you pick college that you're at, or aspire to be at, or you know someone at, and you search for that person, you talk to them, you had a profile picture, age, birthday, height, whatever, you talk to them. And then they eventually had an instant messenger. Eventually. And then you got to know people that way. Well, then you also had Black Planet. And Black Planet... If you remember Black Planet, Black Planet was that thing where black people, of course, would get on and and have, um, th this predates MySpace, by the way, but it, it, you had all these uh, capabilities of putting HTML on your page, music, uh, same capabilities of searching for people, you can go in chat rooms if you want, and, um, and then... You uh, you can reach out and touch people. You reach out and touch someone that you don't know or, or, or you want to uh, reunite with people that you've known in your past and like, hey, how you doing? You know, where you been? Nice picture. Nice, nice song on your page. It takes five minutes for your page to render on my computer and that my computer is slow that I just bought. Thank you very much. And then, of course, you know, that, that changed. That, see, what? let's talk about Black Planet for a minute. Black Planet was one of the worst things to ever happen to culture. Because if you lived on the East Coast like I lived on the East Coast, we have what we call Bikers Weekends. You have one in Daytona, and you have one in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And all Black Planet turned into was um, trying to... Uh, the entire year leading up to spring break was you making as much friends as possible to meet up at Bikers Weekend. You, 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 you nasty people, you. And that's what you did. And and, and then it, it turned into a freaking dating site. And that's what it was not meant for. It was, it was meant for people to get together um, and talk of like interest in a community and of good good um good purpose and then and they get to know each other D harmless but of course it turned into something it's just like everything it starts off good but you humans mess things up so quickly and so terribly well let's move on from black planet then we got myspace which carried over the same type of behavior from black planet but exponentially it was worse now you had the same HTML formatting. Then you had the top friends. Let's see about the top friends and how that changed culture. See, MySpace was one of those things that that changed society and how we thought of our friends. This is what I wanted to get at, and this is going to be one of the uh, consistent um, consistent th topics of of each aspect of social network that I'm going to get at. How do we treat the people that we know and how we communicate with our friends? See, MySpace expanded upon what previous social networks had in terms of getting to know people that you didn't know before. Now, that was a failed attempt. What you want to do now is have a real social network. You want to build a network of people, friends that you already know and expand your network outward. Follow me. So previously you found you tried to find people that you didn't know and make and create a network that way. Well that that 
it required too much work and required too much rejection of people and required uh, too much failed attempts. Where the, where where college club failed. Where they had a high school club too. That was terrible. I, I don't know how parents let their kids get on that. But they they had um they had Black Planet was failed and they had um they had sorority and fraternity focused social networks too. They had uh, noops.com which is a mockery. It is an abomination of social networking. I hope that's still not running. But anyway, where the failed attempts previously came, MySpace excelled into making you rethink what your friend structure was. So you had the top friends. I think it was the top four. Top four friends. And when you started out, you had who on your top friends? Who do you have in your top friends first? It was um, who's that guy that was on everybody's top friends? Can you help me out? Who's on the top friends? Who's on top friends? That guy. That guy. Um, and he was basically on everybody's top friends. Ah, Tom. Tom, thank you. Tom. Tom was on top friends. Now, Tom was this jokey looking character that looked like he had fun, and he looked like he might be your random friend that you met somewhere, and you're like, hey, man, Tom, you're my friend, man. What's going on? And everybody's supposed to know Tom and like Tom. So Tom was on everyone's uh, top friends at first, and then that was supposed to <laughs> tie you in, like, hey, man, Tom's on everybody's top friends. And you weren't supposed to know that Tom was the default friend, which was a terrible idea of, of trying to fake <laughs> and create a, a, a top friend out of this fictitious person. But, but yeah, yeah, Tom on everybody's top friends. Then what happened is you expanded your top friends. Now, you mess around and not put someone close to you on your top friends and see how they curse you out. There was a whole conversation about, hey, why ain't on your top friends? I thought we were cool. I thought we were best friends. And you moved around people. And people took the spot relation to heart. Like, why am I number two on your top friends? Why am I number one? Why is Tom number one on your top friends? And I know you since first grade, and I'm not number one. Then, then people got butt hurt over that. So MySpace made you rethink how you thought about your th your social structure. This is the math cast. Now. MySpace soon would get played out. And of course, well, as MySpace went on, people grew further apart in terms of how they interacted with each other. You used to meet up at the mall, hang out. You used to uh, talk on the phone all day with your, with your best friend, especially if you're female. You talk on the phone all day with with your girlfriend, right? And um, and then a lot of activities that you used to have, which 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 would be really social interaction, you carried on on the internet. Conversations, beefs, true beef started. On MySpace. I mean, you had them everywhere. You had them on, on Yahoo, Instant Messenger, and all that before that. But MySpace is where you, they the, the beef started, where the social bullying and the beef started, and and how people were turned rude and and got really comfortable and complacent about how things operated online. And then uh, you saw their true colors. You saw their true colors and. And my space got played out. Now, who was going to rescue those who were looking for a place to dwell when my space was the Titanic? It was sinking. Well, you got Facebook, which Facebook was proprietary to 
college students that had a valid and active college email address. You had to register with a, uh, they had to verify you had an active and valid email address provided by a university of some sort. Then they realized they had an opportunity. There was an opportunity. So people are looking for a place to go. More people are trying to get on Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg struck gold and and people were fed up with MySpace. I can't I can't take MySpace anymore. There there's there's 15 videos playing on the page. The same thing that happened with with Black Planet, but a lot more people were experiencing they they saw clutter and they saw too many things going on in one place. It was like you you were once in the suburbs and then it turned into a condensed city full of people that it was it was just too crowded too too many things were going on so my uh, Facebook had this clean um, clean page where you couldn't customize <laughs> the days of customization ended with myspace the days of personalizing your page uh, to no end was eliminated with MySpace. Thank goodness for that. And then Facebook eventually grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And Facebook revolutionized once again how we thought about social structure, how we interacted with people. And and this was very important into what happens today because Facebook is still at its peak. Facebook has a billion users out of seven billion people on Earth. Now a lot of these, a lot of people are elderly or too young to even use a computer, unless it's an iPad. And we all seen those commercials with the babies using the iPad, and they seem like they're smart, but you know they can't spell their name. But anyway, that's another show again. But still. You had you had Facebook doing something that no other social network could do. They they got what MySpace started off with doing and they perfected upon it while doing a clean approach to uh, having your social network, your true social network grow. So they pulled in people you went to college with first, high school. It was like if you couldn't make it to your class reunion, which I didn't, and I'm still mad at the committee for that, you held it on Facebook because it's like you got reunited with everyone that you wanted to be reunited with on Facebook. Everyone. Past co-workers. Past, past, some of you past inmates. Like, you know y'all been to jail. And, and Facebook got so strong, they let people use Facebook in jail, that which they still do. Please tell me why. Please tell me why the thing that you want to do most in jail is not correct your life, not rehab your, your life, not do better in life so you don't get locked up again, but you want to jump on MySpace. To see what your baby mom is doing. You want to get on my you you sorry Facebook. You want to get on Facebook to see what your baby mom is doing. You want to see her status. Is she does she find a new dude? That that that's what you get on for. Don't don't lie. Don't lie. Because you have nothing else to get on Facebook for. Are you really getting on Facebook when you're in jail to play Farmville? I don't think so. I don't think so. So, getting off the topic a little bit, trying to find my way back onto the path, you have a billion people on Facebook trying to reunite with each other, trying to interact in a, a way that was that was not thought of before. And it was flawless. It is still flawless in, in to a certain extent. And we'll get into where Facebook kind of messed up and how Facebook kind of messed up society altogether. But before we do that, 
We want to get into a, a couple of other social networks. We're going to get into Twitter. Twitter arose, which was a gimmick. So we all got tired of people posting books on their social network, uh, on their Facebook status. You, you post a paragraph or two. If you go to that, what is it, 500 character limit, and people are like, man, I've got tired of reading. And, 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 and why, why are you typing so much? So you got a 140 character limit on Twitter. And Twitter started off with people talking about stupid stuff. But it had celebrities. It had a celebrity approach on it. So when you first got on Twitter, you wanted to follow your favorite celebrity. See what they're doing. Ooh, I had Starbucks today. Ooh, I'm shooting a new movie. Ooh, I'm talking crap about somebody and nobody's going to see it, but oops, somebody did. Uh-oh. Then, you know, it, it became a, a, a way to follow your favorite celebrity without you having to watch TMZ. Yes. So Twitter was – Twitter evolved eventually. And Twitter became – Twitter was not really uh, vital to – the society until I would say about the time when when the, they found bin Laden all the way up until there tw Twitter found its ground found its purpose when uh, there was this surge to capture bin Laden or kill bin Laden and one guy about a mile away from where all this happened he was tweeting exactly what was going on. That's what live tweeting came from. He was he was tweeting in real time what happened, uh, what he heard in the skies, and what he thought what was what, what was happening. He kind of you know knew if you're in the area, you you kind of knew if there were big bombs going on like that so close to Bin Laden's compound, they're probably coming to get the man. So before CNN broke news, before um, Fox News broke the news, this one regular citizen broke the news first on social network. And that's where Twitter found its, its, uh, its spot, its, its place. And it became a news aggregator, like an RSS feed. It became the hashtag king, the hashtag that that button on the phone where you never pressed before became valuable. It became a way to track subjects, trending topics, as they called it. And and Twitter found its edge. It found its niche. It found a way to get in to where Facebook didn't. It had a totally different approach. It wasn't trying to build your social networks. It wasn't trying to have you... Uh, find uh, people that you know already, and 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 talk in a circle like that. It wasn't was it trying to do that. It was trying to have as many people talk about one subject as possible, and you follow those that subject matter and find people that talk about that subject. That that's what Twitter was and kind of is today, which changed a lot of what we know now. Now, I could talk about Google+, Plus, but Google+, Plus is, is, is a, a central point of a lot of different Google services, so let's not even talk about that. Google+, Plus didn't mess up anything yet. Not yet. Still, still has time. So, let's get to how these social networks changed society as we know it. We have the backstory. Let's talk about how they changed society as we know it. So Facebook, your friends. Twitter, your friends. So we all we, we talked about how we used to communicate with each other, talk to each other, mail each other, email each other all the time, right? Then text messaging came out and all that. And then we drifted further away, being personable with you know it, personal interaction. So now you got Facebook. Now you got Twitter. 
and you have these things that make you closer but further away from the people that you would interact with. So who do you call your friends? Let's think about this. Are they your Facebook friends or are they your real friends? Are your are your Facebook friends your real friends or are your real friends your Facebook friends? That might seem like the same question flipped, but it is a totally different question if you think about it. Let's think about this. Let's talk let, let's talk about that. Your friends on Facebook, are they your real friends or are your real friends your Facebook friends? So let's talk about your real friends being your Facebook friends. Here's where the real social networking uh, comes in, what the, the intention was, right? You take the people that you actually know, you find them, you friend them, and then you talk. The people that you have actually gone out and hung out with. Now, if you have 800 friends, which I don't know if you have 800 friends like that. I don't know if rock stars have 800 friends that they can really call friend. But if you have 800 people on your friends list and you say, man, they are all my friends. I know every last one of them. You are lying to yourself. Lying to yourself. Lying to yourself. Every day that you wake up looking in the mirror, you're lying to yourself. You don't know 800 people's names like that. It is impossible. You can barely remember your third child's name. Yes, I said it. You, 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 you females that got six kids out there, you don't even know the baby daddy, but you know 800 of your Facebook friends. Please tell me where your priorities are. You don't know them. Matter of fact, you have 800 Facebook friends. You go through and do something and somebody comments on your, your status and you're like, who is this person? And you click on you click on their picture and you'd be like, oh man, they're on my friends list. That's what I'm talking about. You don't know them. And they might know you from one one event that you were at and they remembered your face and they realized that there's six degrees of separation let me find a person that might might have hung out with this person that I saw once let me connect the dots friend them and then let me stalk them a lot of people do stalking on Twitter also so let's talk about stalking before I get to the whole thing remember when stalking used to be people would hang out of outside of your residence or your place of work in the car and try to look um, incognito but they did a terrible job at it and it, it was creepy and it, it was the most awkward thing that you can be in right awkward position you can be in being stalked but it was a compliment at the same time on social networking is just annoying we you know what we call social networking stalking we call that trolling and what happens when you get trolled online? People like every status. People comment on every status. And they say dumb shit on every status. They don't say anything that's, that is relevant to your status or tweet, if we're talking about Twitter. They don't say anything that is um, as a significant contribution to to answering a question if you ask the question in your status. They don't play any significant role in your social network activity except to troll you and to piss you off. But you don't want to be that person to unfriend them. I don't know why you don't want to be that person. You have done a lot of mean things in life you have, you have bullied people, you have talked about people to the face when you shouldn't have, you have made fun of people's clothes. But you don't want to unfriend that person that is trolling you. Tell me why that is. But anyway, what, we, we have, you have 800 friends. Let's trim it down, 400. You still don't know 400 people like that. You, you don't. 
you might have come in co contact with 400 people, but you don't know them enough to call them your friend. Now, it, it was a friend game. And, and just like on Facebook, Twitter was the same thing. Let me see how many people will follow me. Now, that is a false representation of your popularity because there are so many uh, false uh, users on on Twitter. I think a stat said that 50% of the people on Twitter were, were not real people. Yeah. So half of your followers might be bots. And, and bots are the worst because you, you – I mean – Here's the thing, which is worse than being trolled by someone on Facebook or a real actual person trolling you. What's worse is a bot trolling you. So you you think up this great thing to say on Twitter, this profound tweet that you have. And you said one key word that brought that bot and activated it and it sent you a stupid link that and the first time you didn't know, you didn't know. You didn't know that that link would you know, if you were on the computer, it's going to give you a virus. You didn't know. You're safe on mobile, but you're like, oh, man, this person out of nowhere responded to my tweet. And you got excited. You were like, ooh, that was a good tweet. I knew that was a good tweet. Somebody responded to it. Yeah. And then you realize you have no idea who this person is. You, you click on their profile and be like, they have zero followers, but they follow everybody. And, and then... You're pissed off because you realize you got trolled by a bot. Now, back to the, the, the friend aspect to, of it. You know what's annoying also? And, and I don't know if this goes on because I don't really pay attention to it. I, I, the notifications I clipped off of it to let me know. But the events. When you're having club events, parties, birthday parties, and whatnot, look, we don't care. No one cares about your stupid party that you're throwing every week at this hole-in-the-wall club. We don't want to come to it. You know, we didn't want to come. If we're going to show up, we're going to show up anyway without the invite. But you made us not want to come anyway because you send out 15 invites in a week for the stupid, ratchet event at this hole-in-the-wall that should not even need an invite to, you should try to send a, a, mass message, a mass message and say, stay away. That's what you should do. Stay away. Let me help you out because if you were my real friend, you wouldn't send me an invite to this hole-in-wall whack party, whack-ass party that I'm going to come to. The drinks are going to suck. The music's going to suck. Everybody's staying around, and then there's going to be a shooting outside. This is your fault, and you're my friend, right? No, you're my Facebook friend. How about let, let's classify, let, let's find out how to classify Facebook friends or social network friends versus real friends. Let's do this. And some of you are going to get offended. And I love it. Let's think about this. You are not. You are listening to the Mavcast, and, and and let me let me let me get let me get into the grit of it. Now, if you thought this was going to be some like one of this apologetic um, podcast where you know I I, I don't um, say harsh things, but I'm not going to say it in a harsh way. It's still going to be harsh things. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about these things. This is my this show is going to be unapologetically harsh. I'm not going to say sorry for anything. Now, now by me saying that, I almost forgot what I was going to say. But look. You people that are let's say you have people on your friends list and you swear up and down that's your friend. But every time you send them a message, they don't want to talk to you unless they want something. Is that your friend? Now, that could be your friend because some friends are like that. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, 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 got, you got these these Facebook friends. They'll never show up to anything that you have. If you're not that person that sends out those invites a lot, and then you have one of those, those, those something really special to you. 
I mean, send out an invite. Not mass. Not a mass invite. But you tailor it to them. You put you put a tailored status update on their page. Or you send them a message and put it on their timeline. Because you want them to see it. And you want them to notice. And you want it to be sincere. Genuine and sincere. And what happens? If that was your real friend, they would comment back and say, thank you very much, or whatever reply to what you said. Real friends would do that, right? You took time out, typed this out. First of all, you thought about it, typed it out, put post, and then what happens? No reply. So you think, oh, yeah, well, maybe, maybe they are busy and they didn't see it. Maybe they're so busy that they didn't see my post. Let me try another angle. So something happened during the week, real big news, and you wanted to talk about it with your friends, your Facebook friends. But what do you do? You try again. You posted a page. And then you put their name on it like they they didn't know the name was on it. They, I mean, you know they saw it. it was on a page. And then what you do is you um, you put a name on it and it ties it to them. And then you know they saw it. But they still don't do anything. They still don't reply back to you. Thank you so much for being a friend. So they don't show up to your the invite that you sent out. They don't show any interest in in the um, in the post that you gave. You send them a couple of, of messages, direct messages on Twitter, Facebook, and they don't reply back. Guess what? You realize that they're not really your friend. Now you butt hurt. Now you're sensitive. Now you're like, I can't believe that. They they rejected me like that. You got rejected. How do you feel? How do you feel about being rejected? Now, your real friends are the ones that you have your phone the phone number to. So let's say they didn't reply back to it. You um you would talk to them on the phone anyway, text message. So here, here's a here's a quick analysis of how you determine or discern who is your Facebook friend and who is your real friend. Here's two criteria. Have you seen them in person more than you've seen them on Facebook? And what, what do I mean by that? If they're your real friend, you've seen them more in person than you have on Facebook, unless you, unless you actually live in a different location, that's fine. But if you're in the same town and you have not seen this person in person as much as you've seen them on Facebook, like if they're your real friend, why are you always on their page? Think about that. If that's your real friend, why are you always on their page? Why are you not just text messaging them? Hmm? Why, why, are you, why are you always on their status messages? Right? So, see, my real friends, my real friends that are on Facebook, I rarely ever notice any of their status messages. I rarely ever uh, notice any post that they do, right? Because I talk to them on a normal basis enough that I'm not searching for what they post. And that might be different from a lot of other people, but let's say you're my best friend. I'm not looking for you to post. I'm not looking for you to post anything on any social network because I'm talking to you at least twice a week, right? 
that's what we wrote twice a week. If you post, if I just happen to run into something that you said, that's fine. That's fine. So your Facebook friend, your Twitter friend is like that. So if you are the type of person that is communicating more with that person on, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, let me let me back up and say non directly. So Facebook Messenger is like text text messaging. That's fine, but if you are commenting on every status message that they put, you're not their friend. You have become their Facebook friend because how do you communicate with your friends? You don't communicate with your friends through Facebook post comments. That's not how you do it. Not on a consistent basis. No, that's not how you do it. Your face, your Facebook friends are totally different from your real friends. I have friends that are on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, my real friends. I know their phone number and I know um, I see them in person. And there's certain things that you would talk about through text messaging or on the phone that you would not say out in the open on social networks that that's something that you don't do and 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 I just want to say let me let me lead into something real quick here's here's an aspect of how things got messed up and I'm going on I'm going close to an hour and I I got to wrap up I got to wrap up but let, let me quickly get to a couple of points here overexposure to social networking um how do we overexpose the social networking? If the first thing you do when you wake up is go on Facebook, go on Twitter. If your main news feed is Twitter, you're overexposed. And if you, it, look, if you believe everything you see on Twitter, then you're overexposed. Um, if you if that's your main form of communication with your friends, your so-called friends, you're overexposed. If you look at, and, and I say this, and I say this like you shouldn't watch, but if you are on YouTube more than you're watching TV, let me take that back because I hope you're watching YouTube to watch this show. Look. Social networking has has changed society as we know it. Like bullying used to be only in school. Now you get bullied on Facebook. See, I don't know how that works. How does that work? How how do you get bullied on on how do you get bullied when you're not face to face? Because someone answer that for me. How do you get bullied when you're not face to face? Let me, let me, let me ask this question. Really, how does one get bullied when you're not face to face? When if you see something online that someone put on your page, on your page, can you not delete it? Can you not report this as abuse? Can you not? They have a button where you can report it as abuse. Are you being verbally abused? Can you report their profile as being abusive? You remember back AOL Instant Messenger? Remember that? Remember when Someone started getting on your nerves and you can like you can hit the ignore thing and then eventually they you they get temporarily blocked. And that was a message to them like shut up, leave me alone. Remember that? So why do we not use the report abuse button? Why do we not how do you how do you get bullied online? This is a major thing. This is this has been a a topic of Dateline 2020 
60 Minutes. Suicides have taken place because of online bullying. I, I really want to know, see, this is how social networking has changed society. Again, you used to get bullied face to face, you used to get beat up, you used to take it, you used to fight back, you used to take your lunch money. Now, with all the technology that we have, they take pictures with smartphones to make fun of you of how you dress, how you how you act and, and share it on social networking. You say something to someone on and like on a text message and they share it with a screenshot on 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 Facebook or, or Twitter and and then you have all your business out there you, you take a picture and you share it with the wrong person and they repost it and then you're all you screwed now I can understand how there's certain extremes that you can be bullied like like you shared something with someone that was kinda of personal right and then they they posted it everywhere they're cruel and they posted it everywhere for everyone to see, and you're so embarrassed that you can't go to school anymore. You feel that you can't live anymore. Well, here's what you do. You beat them up. Just like you do when you got bullied. You, you either tell someone or you beat them up. You earn your respect. It's kind of, I mean, it's a different time, and I feel bad for the kids now that have to deal with it. Like, how do you really deal with it? Like, even though I said what I said just now, how do you really deal with something like that? Social networking has made it so we can interact with people in ways that we never could before, quickly share information between people, between each other that millions of miles away, thousands of miles away, we can, we can share something across the world. I can be in contact with someone uh, in China, Russia, or or down the street, at the same uh, frequency of of times, and like I never could before, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. Like there is there is a major advantage. My nose is itching really badly. Like I I tried to hold back a sneeze just now. Gosh, it's like. It's like right here, right here, right here, right here, all in right here. But how do we, how do we get, how do we, where did we go wrong as society? Why do we have to mess up everything? And I'm, I'm skipping around a lot, and I do apologize, but how do we, how do we, screw up every good thing that we have. Social networking is meant for... Facebook is great for grandparents to stay in touch with their grandchildren, which is miles away, uh, states away. Um, Twitter is good for talking about like topics, like shows. Every Sunday when The Walking Dead is on, Twitter is lit up. Or when scandals on on Thursday, Twitter is lit up about those two shows. Or when the Super Bowl's on, watch how many tweets are sent out when Super Bowl. Those are joyous occasions. Those are harmless, joyous occasions. But there, there are bad sides to it also. There are there are things that happen to where we are drawn further away from each other. I, like, for instance, uh, me and my parents text now, and that has taken away from the amount of calling that takes place between me and them. Um, but but it, but here's a good thing. Here's a good thing. Uh, small bits of information can be shared. Uh, between text messaging and um, and we talk almost every day. It's good and it's bad, but but the, it changed the entire 
the entire culture of how you communicate even with your parents. Like, you can send them a text message. They read it and send it back. You haven't heard their voice in a week. Now, people will call you when they realize, when, when, when it's like, I miss your voice. I, I miss hearing from you. And you do miss hearing that person's voice. It, it makes it, it makes it, it takes you away from being personable. It, 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 it takes you away from having that, that interaction, that, 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 my nose is still itching. It, it, it takes you away of having that, that interaction with that person that you should have with them. Having a meaningless conversation. You know what? You know what just happened? You listening or watching this show, you've heard me have a meaningless <laughs> conversation with you. I thank you. But ah, social network. So you have the good and the bad. You have the aspects of things that you didn't expect to have. We didn't expect bullying to take place on social network. How can you foresee that? How how can you how can you really foresee that? Like, oh man, they're gonna really bully you on like face social networks. Like that had to evolve and not be premeditated from the inception of it. Like, how do you how do you wake up and be like I'm a I'm a really bully this person. I'm going to be the first bullier on social networks. I'm going to really F their life up. We have F'd a lot of people's life. You know what I am tired of? I am tired of people sharing too much of their business. Maybe I should have said that earlier. <laughs> but it's one of the points. You share too much of your business, people. I'm going to finish this drink before the show goes. For instance, you have someone that's going to through marital problems, right? You have someone that's going through relationship problems. My nose is really itching. God. And you they share for some reason for some reason make them feel better or they had to vent. For some reason they shared that they are single now, they are they're going through stuff and too much information, too much information. Now, you used to be the person where you didn't want anyone in your business. Now everyone's in your business. And I just want to tell you once it's out there on the internet, it cannot be taken back. Even if you click that delete button, someone had a chance to take a screenshot of that. Someone probably did. Be careful. Be careful what you, I mean. Be careful what you post. Privacy. This is what I was talking about in the, in the um. Was it the last episode? The last episode. Yeah. Privacy is is a humdinger. I mean, you have to really think about what you post, why you post, where you post. If you're gonna post at all. You have to think about, is this really, I mean, this society is really sensitive now. And there could be, a, like, let me say, this show is going to be posted to social networks. But there's some things that I want to talk about on the show that I can't because of the sensitivity of people in the world because a direct correlation between that and social networks. A direct correlation, which sucks. I want to talk about topics that are controversial but need to be talked about. I can't do it. Social networking has gotten so bad to where jobs are searching your social networks to find out if you are a misfit, if you are worthy of being employed, being on their payroll, if you're a teacher, delete everything. Delete everything. Remember that those, if you got through college and stuff like that and you took those pictures of your nights out, 
and and you had those those angry status messages. Delete all that. Just delete the profile altogether. Just permanently delete it and start all over again. I'm warning you now because social networks, the overexposure, the oversharing, all that will hurt you in the end. You got to be really, really careful. I mean, society has gotten to the point where you are screwed as soon as you sign up. There's no freedom of speech. We've all seen the celebrities, the athletes that have said something on social networking and have lost jobs, have lost money. We, ha I mean, Madonna, Instagram, taking a picture of her kid and, I mean, hey, whatever she said, that's what she said. It, words don't bother me, but apparently they bother everyone else. You got to be really careful. I mean, look at Paula Deen. Um, look at the guy from Duck Dynasty, although he got his job back. Look at Don Imus back in the day. Look, Don Imus, I want to talk to you for a moment, fellow radio guy. I understand that you thought that they were nappy headed hoes. Because they did have nappy heads. Because they did sweat their hair out playing basketball. I'm talking about the girls from Rutgers. They, they, but we don't know if they were hoes or not. They could have been hoes. They could have been. But it was an educated guess. But you can't say it. What you want to say, you can't say. He was not. He was not identifying them individually or trying to say that they are promiscuous. He was just putting them in a category. He he realized he was. He didn't realize he was where he was. You know. You you ever remember when you said something? My nose is really itchy. For some reason. My nose is really itchy. And that bothers me because my nose never really itches. Why is it itching while I'm on the show? But you ever realize, like, you said something and you forgot where you were at? And then you're like, oh, crap, I shouldn't have said that. But you already said it. You're already done. You're screwed. That's probably what happened. And he probably just tried to roll with it. He was like, oh, man, I'm screwed. What am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? But you got to be careful what you say, what you post on social networks. It is drawing us further away from people that we call friends. It is manufactured fake friends, my nose is really itchy. This is bothering me. You don't understand how much... People, you don't understand how much my itchy nose is bothering My hand was itching earlier. And you know how you got... They say your hand's itching and you, you're coming into money. Balling? I must be going to be rich. What does it mean when your nose itches? I'm not a rabbit, so I don't want to do that. But, I mean, that that actually was effective. I might do that again. But, um, I forgot what I was going to say. But anyway, you got to be really careful what you post. You got you to gotta be real careful what you say these days because everybody's, everybody's sensitive. Everybody's sensitive. Everything you put out there is going to stay out there, even though you think you deleted it. So, I rambled enough about this. Thank you for listening to the show, by the way. Uh, the Mavcast. Hey, guess what? Guess what? If you made it this long, thank you for watching. If you made it this long, I am very, very excited to say that Saturday at noon, we are having the NFL Super Bowl prediction show. Panel has been established the the schedule has been set. I'm no I know who's gonna be on the show. 
I know exactly what's going to transpire on the show. I don't know what's going to eventually happen on the show. If it's going to be, it's going to be in the midday, so it's not going to be too ratchet. I'm, I won't be drinking. I don't think. I might have a mimosa. I mean, I might do brunch or something. But um, I'm. The the show is going to be great. There's going to be a lot to talk about. If you have a short attention span, I'm going to need you to listen to sections of the show going here and there. This show is this is just going to be about as long as this show, but this is going to be, look, we're going to have about four guests, and uh, we're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. So if you want to follow the MathCast, first of all, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Or subscribe to the blog at www.themathcast.blogspot.com. The Mavcast is on iTunes, so you can search in the iTunes store under The Mavcast, the space Mavcast, M A V C A S T. Did I spell that right? Yeah. And you bring up all the episodes of The Mavcast. Um, find me on Facebook. I talk a lot about Facebook. I'm back on Facebook primarily just for the show, just for just pr promotion on the show. So that's why I use Facebook for. Um, if you wanted to listen to my previous episode about what you use social networks for, that was done about four months ago, but. It is available on the blog. Please take a listen and look on the blog for that. Um, it's called Social Networks. That's that's all it's called. And you can hit me up on Twitter at Charlie Mav. Instagram. You know, Instagram, Instagram is a crazy thing. Instagram is a worthless piece of crap most of the times, but precious, precious shots are displayed other times. So I... I as soon as I want to stop using Instagram, someone posts a picture of their beautiful, beautiful, newly born child, and I am in awe at their uh, cute and innocentness. Innocentness. Uh, that is a tough word to say. Innocence. And I say, this is a miracle of life. I love these pictures. Hey, kid, hey, people, post baby pictures of, of your kids. This is a precious thing. This, I love baby pictures. Love baby pictures. Uh, love food pictures, baby pictures, car pictures, uh, destination pictures. Just don't post any ratchet stuff anymore. Please, please. This goes into what social network. Use your camera for the right thing. Stop catching people in compromising positions and, and, and focus on the precious, precious memories that you want to capture um, for times to come because no one does photo albums anymore. No, no one takes pictures, develops them, and puts them in photo albums anymore. Make sure your photo album is intact. Instagram is your public photo album. Think of it as that. And post uh, carefully. I can run on with this for ages. But this is the Mavcast. My name is Charlie Mavkin. I'm out. This is Wednesday, the 22nd of January. See you guys Saturday. Have a great night. Hey, if you have baby mama drama, don't stalk her on Facebook while you're in jail. She is humping someone else. And don't, don't try to find them and kill them like Snoop did and Baby Boy. Because you're going to get knocked the hell out. That's true. Stay classy. <laughs>